Welcome to Save As Ability, a podcast to educate and inform you about disability employment issues. My name is David Darkangelo, and I'm your disability policy expert. Hey, everybody. Welcome back for another episode of Save As Ability. And so I was recently contacted by somebody who watched one of our episodes, and they said, Dave, can you build off of what you're talking about? Because we want to make sure at our organization that we're being respectful of people with disabilities. So I thought I'd do here. These are three simple takeaways to treat people with disabilities with respect, fairness, and dignity. And isn't that what we all want to be treated with anyway? So we don't want anything different for people with disabilities. We just, everybody wants to be treated with respect and fairness and dignity, particularly people with disabilities though, because Let's face it, disability is a lack of something, right? We've talked about the, the root word there, that dis of ability, because you can't have a disability without having ability. We're positive here. We focus on ability. Uh, but let's not sugarcoat it. You know, people with disabilities are lacking in some way. They have a challenge. They have a, a significant limitation. If you want to look at start looking at ADA definitions and things like that, you know, substantially limited in some way. So that's real. That's serious. And You know, how do we ameliorate that? That's much of what we talk about here is, and we want to promote access to opportunities for people with disabilities and, and certainly, uh, promote independence and self determination. And, and the way to do that or some fundamental ways is to treat people with disabilities with the respect, fairness and dignity that they deserve. So again, here's my top three ways to do it. The first is, it's kind of simple, but use people first language, right? It, it, so it's important to emphasize the person. There is a person there. And yeah, it's not just the substantial limitation that you see in the person, you know? So rather than saying like a, a wheel bound chair person, we wouldn't say that. We would say a man who uses a wheelchair or a lady that uses a wheelchair or a lady with a, a mobility disability, right? So, uh, Let's use people first language and talk about people, right? So often we were talking about data. Well, people are not rows and columns of figures. They're, you know, show me a million people with disabilities and I will show you a million unique stories of those individuals. So we're about improving the human condition. And one of the best ways to do it is to put the person first and use that people first language. You can do it. You know how to do it. All right, number two, I'm less interested in what you can't do. As a matter of fact, I'm really not interested in what you can't do, like almost at all. I am much more interested in what you can do. So it's focusing on what you can do and what the person can do, right? So most people with disabilities don't choose to be a person with a disability, right? They may have made a choice that led to their disability, but we're not getting into that. We want to focus on positive things. We want to focus on the things that people can do. Choose ability, not disability, right? We know it, it, most people with apparent disabilities, right, that you can recognize if somebody's in a power chair, if somebody has a cane, if somebody has a cochlear implant, and you can recognize that, well, then you want to focus on the upsides of that, what that person can do. Think about trying to cross a street if you're a person who is blind, right? If you are able to get that travel training and, and uh, you know, that orientation mobility training to be able to successfully cross that street, to me, that's a qualification. Who could do that, right? That takes temerity. It takes skill. It takes practice to be able to do that. Those sound like all good qualifications for a job to me, right? So again, focusing on things you can do and maybe even turning it on its head a little. An episode that we've talked about before, my idea is using disability as a qualification. Bring out all those natural problem solving skills. Let's focus on what you can do. That's number two. And then number three is to provide access to opportunity and not just rule people out, right? And this is where there's a little bit of an issue in this DEI debate going on. You know how I feel about that. I I agree with the diversity and I agree with the inclusion. It's that E that I don't agree with. Because what is that? What is equity? 
I believe in equality for all, right? So people with disabilities, really, they're seeking parity. They're just seeking a level playing field. They're just seeking to be part of everything else that everybody else is getting. So, you know, providing access to opportunity is a conscious choice. So is your organization uh, having metrics around people with disabilities in terms of mentoring, in terms of internships, in terms of interviews, in terms of, you know, hiring people and then promoting people with disabilities, right? If you are a large organization and you look around and you're like, well, there's no people with disabilities there. Well, at some point you're going to say, well, why? Is the environment a place that, you know, there's only stairs so nobody in a power chair could get in there? Or there's only like all of our software, none of it works with screen readers, right? So providing, making a conscious effort to provide access to opportunity for people with disabilities. Because again, those disabilities are real. That lack of something, that's real. So how do we try to ameliorate that? Okay. And again, let's push for equality, not equity. I don't know what this equity thing is. You can't measure it. It's just, you know, so those are my three keys. Let's stick to them. Let's use people first language. Let's provide access to opportunities for people with disabilities. We can do it. We're fired up here at Save His Ability. This idea came to us from, from somebody watching an episode. So if you have ideas, send them our way. We want to keep talking about issues that are important to you. Promoting people with disabilities. Promoting people of all abilities. Because you can't have a disability without first having ability. So another episode. I hope you're having a great day. And we'll see you next time. For more information about disability employment issues, please visit our website, disabilityemploymentsolutions.com. The Save As Ability podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, our YouTube channel at Disability Policy Expert, or wherever you stream your podcasts. Subscribe, stream, rate, and review our shows. Your ratings and reviews help our show reach new audiences. Produced by Pod Pro Entertainment. Save As Ability lives within a network of podcasts located at podproentertainment.com. Hashtag the new radio. Again, my name is David Darkangelo, and I'm your disability policy expert. Until next time. Thank you. I hope you have a great day. <laughs>